with uh, your contest between the Lamoille Marymount Tigers or Lions and the Pomona Pits or Sage Hens. Loyola Marymount has a 12-8 lead right now over the Sage Hens as we enter the fourth quarter. Yes. And some, 15 bizarre, seconds. some bizarre ending to the third quarter on the... What Definitely. Happened? There's an exclusion in the break challenged, and the play was reset with a minute 20 left on the exclusion. So we were going into the break previously at an 11 to 7 lead for LMU, and now it's a 12 to 8 lead after the reset, and both teams scored a goal. Yes, you know, it definitely can be tricky, especially on a 6 on 5 when it's put out of bounds or a shot blocked and it's a new shot clock. However, you do have to stay until the ref does wave you in or the table. LMU wins the race to the middle, and they get the first possession here in the fourth quarter. Playing through the top, this is Mitrovic. And Mitrovic is fouled. Playing it to the inside. Crashing about and can't quite get it. That was Mikuzic, who just couldn't quite get a grasp meter. in the middle. Really good defense right there. We have a five meter penalty. And a five meter penalty way far away from the goal. So a really poor foul committed there by LMU. Gives a chance for really a free point from open for the Sage Hens. Yeah. And taking the shots gonna be Jason Cox. Really one of the leaders on this team. Jason Cox, one of the and leaders on the team. Four in the white cap. Rips it, and it's a goal down the right side. Ellen, the Sage Hens pull back a goal early here in the fourth quarter, exactly what the doctor ordered. And the Sage Hens now, only down three, 12-9. So the Lions restart play. This is Walters up top with the ball. Plays it down to the left side. It's Mitrovic. He's fouled. Down the left side. It's another foul. Into the middle. And a great defense right there. That was Mikuzic in the middle. Couldn't quite get position, but great defense by Mark Hudnell. Up bone and pitcher. And the Sagens now have possession on the offensive. A shot. Oh, oh what a beautiful shot. skip. Cross cage bar down. Clayton Hardnell again with a great shot from the left side. And Ramona Pitzer with excellent execution on the offensive side. Now down only two. And the seven seed Sage Hens really taking it in the fourth quarter here to the Lions of LMU. And the Lions looking a little lethargic on offense and certainly on defense as they've allowed two goals in less than a minute to the Sage Hens. This is really exciting now. So the number two team down, or number 17, down only two goals to the number two seeded LMU, who again have won last four of the last five championships here in the WWPAs. But again, they have to reclaim that title from the UCSD Tritons. It's a cross pass, but it's intercepted. So poor pass again by the Lions. Gives it back, and this is Cox coming forward. <laughs> No, poor passing. I think it was just good Jason defense by Jason. Yeah, and it turned over really sloppily. That's going to be a foul. Someone's going to be up from the Alliance. Lions. Pomona Pitzer goalie coming out, and it's a short pass. A poor pass, really. He really had no room to fit that one in. It would have been a thread of the needle pass. And Pomona Pitzer, again, with Higgins on that right side. They play it back to the top. This is Hardman. Hardman, a risky pass there, but it made it. This is back up to Cox on top. Plays down to that right side. Hardman gives it away. That was Clay's, Clayman, pardon me. And back to the goalie, Tessman. Had a tough start to the fourth quarter. We have six minutes left. LMU still has a two-goal lead. Great pass there. Into the middle. And, and we that's going to be an exclusion on Pomona Pitzer. But a great pass in right there to number four, John Colton. He was... Surrounded there, but almost isolated and had a one-on-one -on, -one on goal. So a necessary foul there, but they are going to be down a man now with a new shot clock. LMU working around the perimeter. Back across to the left side. LMU still looking for that open shot. Plays it over to the left side again. 
Up top. It's K. Passes, passing from the one to six is key. Shot just wide. A pretty poor okay. shot in the circumstance with the six and five or yes. six versus five advantage. And what would they look for there? We could have been a better shot. Could have been a better shot. Just just pulling back inside, in between the posts. You know, because everyone else is moving, trying to cover the one and the six positions. You know, because those are the best shots. And essentially, it's a quick pass into set or into the post for a tip in. Yeah, that one, a shot from a poor angle, really. Eight seconds left on the shot clock here for the Sage, and it's great defense yes. by LMU. And that was number 16, Seth Coldren on the block right there, had his hands up well and moving them, really active. Defense pays off. Less than five minutes now left in the fourth quarter, LMU still with a two-point lead. That's an ordinary. And a good block. Rebound, new possession for LMU. LMU's ball. Ball's up the floor. LMU and it looks like a drive going into LMU. Oh, and that would have been a good shot, but a good block by Pomona Pitcher's goalkeeper. A brilliant pass into the middle there. That was Colin Walters who found his teammate, Mitrovic, and Mitrovic just couldn't finish with the wide open net. But a great pass in. And LMU, you know, may regret that going down the stretch if they yes. end up losing uh, another goal to the Sagens. Unfortunately, Sagens turned over once again. Some sloppy play on both sides, some poor outside shots, and really uh, both teams playing some solid defense. Definitely. Both teams. Seems like LMU is holding the lead here. Four minutes remaining. An early flurry from the Sagens. It's really kind of stagnated here in the last couple minutes. Yes. That's great defense right there. That was on the Sage Hens. That was Clayton Hardman, number 13. Really got his hands into the face of Mikuzic. And Mikuzic lost out to him. Pomona Pitts are playing it forward now. This is Hudnell. Plays it over to Clayman. Back up to Hudnell. Hudnell with the ball. Looking for the shot. Back to Clayman. Back up to Hardnell. Hudnell with the shot. And it's off the post. On the left side, tried to sneak in an outside shot, but the angle just wasn't there. And it's going to be a timeout taken by LMU with just 3.30 left in the game. LMU. And we're back. 3.30 left in the fourth quarter. Score is LMU 12, Mona Pitzer 10. LMU gets a foul at point. LMU really haven't found their offensive rhythm here in the fourth quarter. They've gone five straight minutes without a goal. We're trying to reverse that right now with this offensive possession. Mitrovic passes over to the left side. I agree, but I think at this point, if they want to keep the lead, it's ball control, not really taking some pretty risky shots. They do have the lead. They wanted to keep it. Three minutes left in the fourth. Anything could happen. If they want to score another one, just for a little bit of insurance, they can. But I think at this point, slow and steady wins the race. And a big block by LMU's goalkeeper, Someone from Pomona Pits are coming, and he's just tipping it out. Yeah, he really did Smart. a great job on that rebound. That rebound was just floating there, just feet from the goal. He did a good job just kind of batting from under the water, out of the heart's way. Yes, kind of swoop shotting it, making sure that Pomona Pits didn't get it. Big shot Foul right outside five. Possible. Coltrane, and he really puts a nail in the coffin of the Pomona Pitcher Sage Hens. A 
it's a nail in the coffin. Bruins are so safe. Really to score on every 13 to 10. Definitely offensive possession, and I think on defensively, it's calling press to steal. Really playing man on man defense and trying to steal the ball from whoever, to whoever has it. So Moore plays it down to the side. Higgins. Higgins is fouled. Minute 40 left in the game. Higgins with the ball, he crosses it over. Back up to Moore. Moore to Higgins. No easy shots here for the Sage Hens. It's an exclusion on LMU. And Number that's seven. A big, big foul right there. Sage Hens need a goal. Passing around the outside. Cutting off. Up to Moore. It's inside. And that's Moore with the goal. On the assist from Jason Cox. A great little big shot in the yes. first. On the middle. assist from Jason and that's Cox. Also the ordered again. Two goal deficit now with a minute that was a great left. pass, great so shot. Definitely. And, you know, great looks on both teams really looking inside Going the post. down by the two. Ball, making the goalies move. And then the goalies don't even see it coming when they pass that quick, quick shot. Quick, quick pass, excuse me, into the post. It's the person closest to the cage. So a couple really important exclusions here near the end of the game on both sides of the, yes. the pool. And, uh, you know, what, which team can score without the exclusion? Maybe the one that can uh, put the next goal in the back of the net. Yes, which I think LMU. I think LMU has a little more of the muscle. Yeah, they certainly showed it. And, you know, being the number two ranked team coming into this tournament, uh, you expect a lot of them physically. You don't think they're going to give up much ground. Smitrovic up top. Cox with it to Mitrovic. Getting the foul outside five. Going to get up big, faking. Passing it up to point with eight seconds remaining in the shot. Passing it into set or trying to do the overpass, but Kona Pitzer got a hold of it. 50 seconds left. Kona Pitzer needs a real quick goal here and then to get back on defense. Under a minute. Passes across, skips through. Can't get a shot off quite yet. Higgins is fouled. 38 seconds left on the clock, 16 on the shot clock. Into the middle, it's intercepted, and a great interception. And that's really going to do it for the game. LMU does a great job on defense right there. Sage Hens just under a little too much pressure offensively. Yes. They find much space. Seems like after this possession, Bono Pitcher is going to have about four seconds left on the game clock. Well, I'll be doing a great job, although Pomona Pitzer really did stick it to them in the third quarter, coming back. And four on the clock left. Pomona Pitzer, you try and get a consolation. It's a good defensive play there at the end of the game by Walters. And that's going to do it here at LMU. Pulls off a tight victory against yes. number seven ranked Sagehands. What caught your eye in this game? Well, you know, the counterattacks definitely from LMU from both sides, too. And the fact that Pomona Pitzer really did come back at the start of the third quarter.